Number 65. Using the bond energies in Table 7.2, determine the approximate enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. And then we have H2 gas plus Br2 gas yields 2 HBr. Okay, so we have to find a approximate, not exact, enthalpy change. Now, remember, enthalpy is delta H. I usually remember this because there's an H in enthalpy. There's stands for capital H, and enthalpy, delta H, is always talking about heat energy. So we want to figure out whether heat is going to be released or absorbed when these guys make HBr, right? The H2 combines with the Br2 to form HBr. Now, we have to use bond energies. So that means that we have to use the energies that are either in a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. Now, whenever they want you to find out, you know, the enthalpy using bond energies, the easiest way to go about this is to just take a second and draw the Lewis structures. I know that it's a extra step, but the idea here is that you want to see specifically what bonds are in these molecules and these compounds. So what bond is in H2? What bond is in Br2? And HBr. Now we have tons of videos on the channel designated to just learning how to um, draw a Lewis structure. So if you need more um, ad, you know, advice and guidance, I'm there for you guys. All right, you could always go check the channel out for those videos. This one will kind of be like a quick inversion. So you could pause the video and see if you can draw the Lewis structures for H2, Br2, and HBr, and then follow along. So H2, we have two hydrogens, and maybe I'll say I have two hydrogens, and each hydrogen only has a single bond. Well, I just kind of gave it away, but each hydrogen only has one uh, electron, so that's just a single bond. It doesn't matter that this is in the gas state. So for Lewis structures, eh, who cares? <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going. So we have H2 plus Br2. So bromine, I got two bromines, Br, Br. In this case, there is a single bond with the six electrons around each bromine. So I'll draw that. And then this yields HBr. So how does HBr look? Well, I have a hydrogen. I got a bromine. Hydrogen can only have one bond. So it could only have a single bond. And the bromine has the six electrons. But now it's super important to note how many of each you have. This was already balanced because I already see coefficients, but you have two HBrs. So I have to either do one of two things. I have to either draw two HBrs, but when stuff gets a little hairy <laughs> or messy, and maybe, you know, you have a balanced equation where there's like seven Br2s, uh, I wouldn't, you know, be sitting there writing out seven Br2s. So we could always just replace it with those coefficients. I have two Br's, I have, or two HBr's. I'm just going to put a two in here just to kind of uh, key myself in on that. For all these other ones, we just have no coefficient here, no coefficient here. This means that I just have one of them. So maybe I'll put, put in the one just to kind of show you guys. Okay. Now, the hardest part is basically done, right? Drawing the Lewis structures. Because now we can go to that table and figure out those bond energies. And that's what I did for you guys already. So I found out what the bond energy is. I labeled it B, B. Oh, hold on. What happened to that one? Okay, so I found out the bond energy in kilojoules per mole of each bond. So a single HH bond has a bond energy of 436, 190, and 370 for the other ones as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write them underneath. So we have 436 for the HH bond, the H2 bond. I got 190 for the Br2, and I have 370 for the HBr. Okay, so now what am I going to do with these numbers? Well, there is a formula, right? And the formula is this. Kind of looks like your delta H formula as well, where you have the sums for the left and the right side. But this one is a little bit different because 
the delta H for the whole reaction, Rxn stands for reaction, is equal to this symbol. This symbol just means the sum. And when you're taking a sum, you're just adding, you know, add it up. So we're going to add up all of the bond energies for the broken side. The broken side is the reactant side minus all of the sums added up of the bond energies of those that are formed. And the form side is always the product side. So you always break from the reactants. These got to, they got to break to make these bonds. They are formed. All right, so let's add it all up. Let me just bring this down a little bit just so that we have a little bit of room. And now the thing is, is that we just have to take into consideration how many of each we have. But we have one H2 and one Br2. So technically these should be multiplied by one. I'm just showing you that uh, just, you know, for future reference, if there isn't a one there. Um, but any, any coefficient, you're just multiplying it by. And literally it's H2 plus Br2. So you have to add these two together. That's why it's the sum. For this side, there was two HBRs. So this is where it really matters. You have to times the 370 by two. So let's find out the numbers. On the reactant side, 436 plus a 190. What do we get? 626 total for this side. And then we got two times 370. Oh boy. 370. I get so excited. I can't even plug it into the calculator, right? Um, three, uh, 340. Christina, put your glasses on. I don't wear glasses, but maybe I should. But anyway, we have 626 and 740. So we're just going to plug it in. The delta H, the enthalpy for this reaction, and it's approximate because it's not standard values from the delta H values, but it's just the bonds broken. So 626 minus the bonds formed, which is 740. Let's plug it in. And I'm just gonna take, that's why I love the TI-84. You can just go up there, grab it, kind of lead you less error because the numbers are already there. And there we go, delta H, for the whole entire reaction is a negative 114. The bond energies were all in kilojoules per mole, so that's the unit that I have to use. It's negative, which means that it's exothermic. So when this reaction act actually happens, 114 kilojoules per mole of energy is released. So that's what the negative means. It's just being released instead of absorbed. And oh no, that's going to... That's going to make me so sad. I went over. I must fix it. Okay. I don't have any issues. <laughs> but there you go, guys. Um, I, I hope that this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And I look forward to helping you in future lessons. Um, and yeah, have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.